Hey guys, welcome back to the Poker Vlog. This is episode number 15. And for this episode, we're gonna be concluding our trip to Sacramento with my good buddy, Kevin Colenzo. But there are a few things I wanna talk about first. Number one is that a few days ago, I played the $1,650 main event at Planet Hollywood. And I look over to my left and they seated uh, Jeff Boski right next to me. So. It was pretty fun, pretty interesting. He's a cool guy. We had a lot of stuff to talk about. We both made it to day two. I bagged 54K and somewhere in the middle of day two, I actually almost tripled up. I had pocket kings versus ace king and ace queen and uh, the board ran out well. I hit a king on the river and my uh, high point for that tournament was around 140K. I went card dead for a while. Then right before we made the money, I uh, I got it all in and ended up getting 38th while the top 36 spots paid. It's pretty brutal to uh, make it make it that deep in the tournament. Um, I've got a I've got a walk of shame video that I'll probably include at the end of this vlog if you're interested in watching it. Uh, I didn't I didn't vlog. I'm not gonna put an episode together to vlog the tournament. It was just it was a big buy-in for me, so I wanted to focus as much as I, as I could. Uh, but Jeff is vlogging it, so I'm sure that should be up shortly. Definitely check that out. We played one interesting hand together that he said he was planning on putting in there. Um, the second thing is that I checked my, my mailbox the other day, and I got two letters. So one of them was not meant for me, <laughs> and uh, the other one was my first letter that I've ever gotten from a viewer. It was sent by Ken. It was really cool. Uh, I definitely appreciate him just taking the time to write this. He, he wanted to congratulate me on the vlog, said he, he, he's seen every one of them, and uh, he looks forward to each new one. But he said, I write to you today because I'm looking to either get into a poker group or put one together. He just moved to Las Vegas about a year ago, I guess. He says he doesn't really have anybody to uh, discuss things with away from the tables. And he says, my hope is that you've had similar requests from other folks and you can put us together or maybe I'm looking to, uh, to put my own group together. So I think that's pretty interesting. Uh, talking with friends is definitely the best way to improve in poker, I think. So I might put my own group together. If you guys are interested in becoming a part of that group, then I guess let me know in the comments section and uh, maybe I'll start something up. Also, if you're not aware, there is a poker forum site called 2 plus 2 Poker and I'll put a link to that in the description box. That's where a ton of pros have, have gotten really good uh, really quickly. So definitely check that out. Now for, for this episode, the main focus is going to be on a cash game session that I played with Kevin between his uh, day one and day two of the WPT $3,500 main event. So we go out to Stone's Casino, they're really nice out there. They actually comped us some food and uh, some, some beverages. And then we played an interesting session. Um, and then we will see how Kevin finished in the main event. So I hope you guys enjoy it and uh, let's get to it. After grabbing some food, Kevin and I jump in the 2-5 game. It was a little wild, there were lots of players making big bluffs and just doing things that were not conventional. About 20 minutes in, Kevin opens to 15, I call directly to his left with pocket 7s, 
Then it folds to the big blind who also calls. The flop comes jack 6-5 with two hearts. Both players check to me. I take a stab at it and bet 20. The big blind who is short stacked raised it up to 55. Kevin folds and the action is again back on me. The big blind is representing a hand like ace jack, two pair, or a set. He could potentially have a big draw, but I have two sevens, including the seven of hearts, and this blocks a lot of straight and flush combos. Since I have blockers the hands that I beat, and I'm at the very bottom of my value betting range, I should just be folding all the time. But somehow I convince myself that since I'm in position, it's only 35 more, and there are a lot of turn cards that can help me out, I call. Regardless of the outcome of this hand, it's certainly a mistake to call here. That's what I do though, and the turn is the four of diamonds. So this is a great card. If I was behind, I just picked up quite a few outs. And to my surprise, the big blind checks. I suppose he could be doing this with a hand like ace jack or jack x of hearts if he was value raising the flop, but those should really be the only hands he might check the turn with. He's so short stacked and only a few combinations of straights get there. He should still be betting with two pair or better. His line made it look like he check raised the flop with a flush draw and is now giving up. So it's back on me and I bet 80. I don't necessarily love it. It's a spot where checking back is completely fine, especially because I don't want to get jammed on, but I really felt that was ahead given the way that he played it. The big blind only calls and now it seems even more likely that I'm ahead. I thought any big made hand would almost definitely ship it there. The river is the ace of diamonds and this is a horrible card. There are basically no hands he can have now that I'm ahead of. He checks, I check back, he turns over pocket jack so he flopped top set and he's a little bit upset that I didn't bet the river. Glad to be done talking about that hand, I was kind of dreading it a little bit. Now let's take a look at a hand Kevin gets involved in. He picks up ace king offsuit in middle position and opens to 15. The Button, who is a certified wild man that had already shown several bluffs, three bets from the Button for a third orbit in a row, Kevin four bets to 205, and the Button calls. The flop comes queen three deuce with two diamonds. Kevin C bets small to 145, and the Button calls. The turn is a queen of hearts. It's one of the worst cards in the deck for Kevin since there are hardly any queens in this four bet range other than maybe pocket queens. Kevin checks, and the button, who is a thinking player and probably realizes how bad of a card this is for Kevin, ships it for 600. It looked a lot like a bluff, and given the opponent's image, it's tougher than it seems to lay down ace-king, especially with how big the pot is already. Also, Kevin doesn't have any blockers to the two flush draw possibilities out there, making it more likely his opponent could be bluffing with a draw. Kevin calls, the river is an offsuit three, the player says Kevin is good and sounded a little bit embarrassed. Then he turns over pocket fives. Kevin can't quite believe what his opponent jammed with. Now you bluff. Top of his range, dude. <laughs> Six ten. <laughs> One two. This wasn't the end for Kevin and the Wild Man. Shortly after, Kevin lost another massive pot against him, so it was just not his day. After losing that pocket 7s hand and seeing how the table played, my strategy was to tighten up, wait for big hands, then let these big bluffers do their thing. The only downside is that I didn't make a hand for a long time. People started noticing me knitting it up, and I feared they wouldn't give me any action if I did eventually make a good hand. It was time to get in the mix. I pick up king 9 of hearts in a straddle pot, one player limps in from the hijack, then Kevin raises to 45 from the cutoff. He can be doing this with a wide range. I have a good image at this point and I'm on the button with a hand that plays pretty well post flop. So I three bet to 115. Everyone folds, which I'm happy about. And then somehow I got an extra $5 out of the hand. How the hell are you gonna stick <laughs> He finally woke up, plays one hand every fucking two hours. <laughs> if you can show a bluff, I'll give you $5. He's a nit. Oh! oh. <laughs> it is a blow <laughs> He only makes money off of me because he knows I'm blowing. That technically wasn't a block because that was King 9 suited. That's not a bad yeah. 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 one. That's not really a bluff. That might have been the best hand. The very next hand, I have Ace Jack offsuit in the cutoff. 
The short stack in middle position limps in. I raise to 20. The guy who stacked Kevin earlier calls in the big blind. Then the short stack calls too. The flop comes ace nine deuce with two hearts. Both players check to me. It's a great flop. We've got top pair, good kicker, and a backdoor flush draw. Plus, we have a guy in the hand who is prone to bluffing. I check back, somewhat for pot control, but also to allow the big blind to bluff if he thinks I'm weak. There aren't really any bad turn cards either since we have the ace of hearts, so this seems like a good spot to see a free turn. The turn is the eight of diamonds, the big blind checks, and the short stack bets 65. This is a pot sized bet, it looks a little weird. A lot of times players do this with big draws, but occasionally I'll see people do it with monster hands as well. I can't fold, given the fact that I've super underrepped my hand so far, and the whole plan of checking back the flop was to induce a bluff. So I call, and the big blind folds. The river is the king of diamonds. It shouldn't have helped the opponent very much, since he only limped in. He could have king x of hearts type hand, but that's about it, I guess. He checks, I check back, he turns over 7-5 of hearts, and we win. In this hand, I pick up ace-queen offsuit on the button in a straddle. There's one limper, I raise the 45, the small blind calls, he's an older guy that I've seen bluff quite a bit, including one huge bluff shove. The limper folds, so we go heads up to the flop. The flop comes ace-10-7 rainbow, the small blind checks, I check back for the same reasons as the last hand, I want to pot control, make it look like I'm weak, and induce a bluff while I'm in position. The turn is a four of clubs, and my opponent bets 75. I call, I underwrapped my hand, hoping he'd bluff, so everything is going according to plan. The river is another ace. The small blind now bets 175. I call, he turns over four three of spades for a pair of fours. He sees my hand, and he's somewhat surprised. I never thought in a million years I was trying to push you off an ace. I'm happy my plan worked out, and despite being in for 1200, I'm now up on the day. I go another long stretch without picking up a hand, and decide to get involved with king-queen offsuit. A new player in middle position, who had already opened several times, raises the 20. Then the short stack and hijack calls. I don't normally like just calling with this hand from this position, so I 3-bet to 90. I have blockers to ace-king, ace-queen, pocket kings, and pocket queens, so it's not very likely that I'll get 4-bet, and given the fact that I hadn't played a hand in a long time, I expect for both players to fold a good percentage. This time, however, the player in middle position calls, and the hijack folds. The flop comes 5-4 deuce with 2 diamonds. The opponent checks, and I see bet to 80. It's a small bet, I'm trying to get some ace high hands and possibly some suited connectors that he might have to fold. This is one of the worst hands I'll have in this situation with no real value, so it's a good candidate to turn into a bluff. I expect to get calls from almost all pocket pairs though, so my plan is to bet small on this flop and then fire again on most turns. The opponent does call, and the turn comes out, it's the three of spades, which is a great card since I'll have a lot of aces in my 3-bet range. He checks. I wouldn't expect him to have too many aces other than hands that have the ace of diamonds or perhaps ace-king with the king of diamonds, or maybe ace-x of hearts that flop the backdoor flush draw and a gutter. I bet 160 in order to get all pocket pairs above sixes to fold, but he calls and now I am just done with this hand. The river is another five. He checks, I check back, he turns over a seven of clubs. Pretty strange call pre-flop since I imagine this is close to the bottom of his pre-flop opening range. The flop call kind of seems reasonable since it was a small bet and in his mind a three six, eight or ace all help his hand, but playing out of position and without a card on the board that is his suit, a fold is probably a little bit better. Now it's getting late at night, we have to leave soon so that Kevin can rest up for day two of his main event. I look down at ace jack from under the gun in the straddle pot, I raise it up to 45. The player who tried to bluff me earlier with 4-3 of spades calls from under the gun plus one. Ten minutes ago his stack was down to about 150, but he 3-bet shoved an under the gun raise a few hands earlier with jack nine off, 
and cracked pocket queens when he made trip nines on the river. I was happy to get in a pot with him, even if it was out of position. Everyone else folds, and the flop comes ace-seven deuce rainbow. I flop top pair with a good kicker again, and now I'm devising a plan to get his whole stack. He'd already seen me check top pair a few times, so here I mix it up and I bet 20. I'm hoping it'll look fishy to him and he'll do something silly like raise with only a few outs against me. Instead, he just calls and we see a turn. The turn is a 10, not a great card, but no real reason to be concerned just yet. I check, hoping he'll bluff. He bets 75 with 180 left. This is exactly the amount he bet last time when he tried to bluff the turn against me, so I'm happy to call. The river is a four of clubs. It's a complete blank. I check, hoping he'll take another stab at it. He shoves for 180. Again, almost the exact amount he bluffed the river with before against me. I snap call, and this time he turns over ace-10 off and wins. So he smashed the turn, and he got the maximum from me. I wasn't too happy about doubling him up, and after that I started deviating from my pre-flop strategy quite a bit by calling with a much wider range, hoping to connect with the board and get paid, but I just couldn't make a hand. Bled away another 200 or so, then realized I wasn't playing well and I needed to get out of there. I picked up, booked a $525 loss, and cashed out. I lost a little over 500. Kevin lost more. A lot more than that. Uh, but this is a cool place. We'll definitely come back and hopefully run better. Game was great. Place is awesome. Lots of action. Check it out. Everyone, everyone was really friendly. All, yeah. So we will be back. Be. The following day, Kevin resumed his quest for his first WPT title. It was day two of the 3500 main event, and Kevin had some work to do. I'm very short. <coughs> Are you? I need a lot of help. I have like 23 bigs. He got off to a slow start, but then won a key hand with his tournament life on the line. Kevin just got a double up with East King versus Kings. So now I think he has around uh, 45 or 50 big blinds. 90 people left, 53 get paid. He continued to run his stack up until he got coolered with Pocket Kings versus Sorel Mizzy's Pocket Aces. Mizzy went on to get second place for 190k while Kevin and I headed for the exit. Well, this trip's pretty much done. Kevin and I did great. Uh, if by great you mean did great, then we did not do great. <laughs> I just lost kings to aces in the main event and I got it in on the river. So you busted like 80th or something? Yeah, like 30 away from the money, so. And then I just, you know, those are always frustrating, but especially when I had a lot of chips, I ran up to like 200K at, uh, at 3K, which is 70 big blinds, which is a lot in these things. Overall, it was a rough trip for both of us and we were happy to get home. The next morning, we started our nine hour journey back to Las Vegas and I started to put the vlogs together. Hey guys, thanks a lot for watching the episode. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. And if you're interested in taking part in that poker group that I talked about at the beginning where we can talk about poker hands or other poker related topics, let me know in the comment section. If there are enough people that wanna do that, then I'll try and get that going. Uh, I, wanna, I wanna give a special thanks to Stone's Casino. They were super cool and really friendly out there. They comped Kevin and I with uh, free drinks and free food. They also seem to be very forward thinking in terms of social media. They, they allowed me to video there, which was awesome. And they have their own version of Live at the Bike. It's called Stone's Live. They stream it on Twitch once a week. Then they rerun the episodes on YouTube. So definitely check those out. They said that if I ever wanted to get a vloggers game going, that um, we could play at, uh, at Stones Live and they would broadcast it and they would hook us up with free hotel rooms for anyone who wanted to participate and they might be able to hook us up with uh, free travel expenses as well. So reach out to your favorite vloggers, have them get in touch with me and maybe we can put that together. Uh, as promised, I told you guys I would show you the walk of shame video that I took. It's pretty funny. I'll, you can check that out uh, right after this. So thanks again for watching and good luck at the tables.
just got 38 from the Planet Hollywood main event, $1,650 buy-in. Top 36 made the money. That one hurt. Got it in with Ace Jack on the button for 90K. The lines were three and 6,000 with a $500 ante. Huh? Say hi. Where for poker face? Did you win? I Is got. I just bubbled the <laughs> the main event upstairs. Oh, you won? No, not quite. I uh, just lost. I was the. You are gonna win next. Time. Keep Thanks. pushing forward. That's why we're doing this video right now, right? All right, exactly. That's why we're doing this video. <laughs> All right, I'm going to say, what's your name? Brad. Brad. For me, Laura, good job, Brad. All right, thanks. So, someone doesn't really know how poker works, apparently. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. Was she needling me back there? I'm not sure. Um, anyway, yeah. Brutal, brutal, brutal. Uh, picked up Ace Jack offsuit on the button, folds to me. Blinds are three and six thousand with five hundred dollar ante, five hundred chip ante. I open shove. Small blind calls, or sorry, small blind folds. Big blind gets ace king suited. It's a big stack. He calls. Neither of us make a pair, and uh, that was it for me. Very rough. <laughs> 